Today I'm going to make a meat pie that I haven't shown you before. It's called a French Canadian meat pie. It does not need many different ingredients. Um, I have here a half a pound of ground pork, not sausage. Sausage is already seasoned. Half a pound of ground pork, half of a pound of hamburger. I have a medium onion chopped up. I have a large potato that I'm going to boil and mash. I have a dash of nutmeg, a little bit of poultry seasoning, and of course some salt and pepper. This is some au jus or juice from doing a beef roll, so I'm going to make a gravy at the end. But the other thing I don't have here right now is I will use my mom's uh, pie crust recipe at the very end. This is a little different than my other pie recipe. I'm going to combine these things and cook them on the stove for about an hour, then put them in the pastry and bake it until the pastry's done. Pretty simple. Let's get this going. First things first, I'm going to boil my potato. It's one large potato and I did peel it. Then I will mash it and add it to everything else. So the first thing you do is you need some mashed potatoes. It takes 15-20 minutes. It depends on what, how little you cut up the pieces of potato. My potatoes are all done so now I'm going to mash them. I love using my masher but with arthritis in my hands I can't always use it. There. Now I'm going to add my meat half a pound of pork, half a pound of burger, and a medium onion chopped. I'm going to mix this together using my specialized tool. I know this seems weird, but with the ingredients you have, what could be wrong? Now I'm going to add some seasoning. I have some pepper. Like I said, we love pepper. Some salt. A dash of nutmeg. A dash. I guess I'm going to do what they call a pinch. And a little bit of poultry seasoning. As much as you like. I'm not going to add a lot. Probably another dash. Now I'll finish mixing this together. And it's going to go in my skillet. Now if the mixture seems dry, add a little water. But mine seems fine. I've had this on low. Get it in there. Now I've started my timer for an hour. I'll see how long I do this. I can be kind of impatient sometimes when I'm cooking. But I'll be tending it, I'll be turning it and make sure it browns. And It's really going to bake together right now. Then I'm going to make my pie crust and put it in the pan. And you only bake it as long as it takes to brown the pie crust. Let's let this go. While that is cooking, I'm going to show you my mom's pie recipe. And I use this for many things, meat pies included. And this makes enough for a bottom and a top of a pie. Two cups of flour, one half cup of oil, one half cup but a little bit more of milk, and I have egg here to wash the top of it so it browns better. I'll do that later. I'm just using a standard plate, but I do love these. These are nice. If you don't have one, get one. I want to fill you in a little bit here. I'm doing this on a medium or heat because I don't want to burn things. I just want it to brown nicely and all the flavors to go together. Now this has only been about 10 minutes, so I'm going to turn it way down. It's pretty much brown, but they want the flavors to go in really well. While that's cooking, finishing off, I'm going to make some gravy, which I can heat up later. But I have a video of making a roast in a roaster, an electric roaster and you add some fluid and then the drippings from the beef makes the best au jus. Anyway, there's a lot in there so I save what's left and I freeze it. This is what I'm going to use for my gravy. You could use cream of mushroom soup, you could get buy the canned gravy, but I'm going to use this. Now I just turned on my skillet so I'm going to give it a few minutes to warm up. Remember, it's cast iron. And as my skillet is warming up, at this point it's all browned so you taste a little and see what you need. I need more pepper and a little more salt. Kind of bland tasting. And you can do that several times during the time you cook this. 
Let's get back to the gravy. I'm letting this melt. I took it right out of the freezer and I didn't use all of it so I'm putting the rest back in. I'm going to use cornstarch to try to get this to thicken up and remember if it's too strong just add a little more water. Let's let this melt. Now I'm not the best gravy maker but I'm going to use some cornstarch and it's not really hot so I'm hoping it won't be lumpy or it will. <laughs> One of the two. Then I'll, I'll take a taste and I'll see if I need to add water or not. That'll be plenty. Whew. The reason I'm using cornstarch is because I don't want the taste of flour that can linger. Now you're going to see little bits of mushrooms in here. That's what's left over from doing the roast in this. If you can see here my gravy's done and it is just perfect. I'm going to put it in a bowl and I'll heat it up when everything's done, but this turned out great. <coughs> it is a little strong, but we like that. So I'm going to take this off. It's all done. Here's my meat. Actually, I let it go a half an hour. It's fully cooked. It's the taste I want, and everything is tender. So now I'm going to make my crust. This is a very easy crust to make. I've got two cups of flour in here, a half of a cup of oil, and a half of a cup of milk plus a little extra. What I'm going to do first is pour the milk into the oil and kind of combine it a little. Just get a little bit head start. Then I'm adding it to my flour. There. Now, I don't know why, but I have to have this spoon to make this. It is the sturdiest spoon. I can really bear down on something. So if it's not in my drawer, it's a whole hunt to find it. This is a very easy crust to make. The only thing you can go wrong is making it too wet or too dry. And you just kind of have to get used to it and feel for it. Let me get just right. How can I tell? It's pliable, but it's not stiff, and it's not real pliable. Then you have trouble. Let's cut out this pie already cooked. All your meat is cooked. There's potato in here, onion, yada yada. That's all cooked. Let me roll out the hat. Pick this up. Here's my pie. Here goes the hat. You want to center it as much as you can. And even though you try, sometimes you miss. But this is pretty good. I'm going to take off the excess again. You can use a knife. I just use my finger. Now you're going to crimp the sides. Now I'm going to vent it. And you need to do this. <gasps> Let's that steam escape. Last but not least, I'm going to use a little egg wash on it. This helps it brown on top. And I'm just putting this in the oven until the pastry is done. I'll let you know how long that is. I can't remember if it's 20 minutes or... And remember, just buy that... The, uh, uh, just buy the pie dough that's in the can so you don't, you don't have to do all that. My very last thing is I put this on. Now that keeps the rim from getting too brown. You take it off at the end. Uh, you could also use aluminum foil. I'm going to put this in the oven. About 30 minutes for the crust to brown up. Now I think it's because it was my mom's crust. If you used, uh, if you used pie crust from a can, I think it would be a lot faster. Let's cut in. It sure smelled good as it was cooking. I don't know why I do this and try to do it live. <laughs> right in front of you, it can get real messy. If this doesn't work, you'll never see this. Well, pretty much. See that? You've got all that meat in there and any spices you wanted. 
Oh, that's going to be good. French Canadian meat pie. Use canned crust if you like. It smells really good and we're going to have this for supper. Give it a try. Bye-bye.